Hey there, my name is Julian and welcome to this week's episode of Webflow Weekly where we're gonna do something a little bit different this week. Now, we all love ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, whatever it is that you may use for AI. And uh, some of us have even played around with things like Cursor and Claude Code, which are agentic coding tools, which basically means something that does the actual work for you. It acts like an agent, like an employee, whatever you want to call it. And I've been thinking for a while, why hasn't someone come out and made something that's like agentic web flowing? But guess what? That has been done now. There is a new Webflow app called Miyagi Agents, which is super cool looking. And what I wanted to do is try it out for you live here on this episode of Webflow Weekly. Let's get right into it. <music> Now, I have played around with Miyagi Agents a little bit actually on this website, but not very much, and I was pretty impressed. So let's go ahead and try it out live for you today. So I'm going to go ahead and open my apps and pop open Miyagi Agents just like that. Now we can see here we have design agent, coding agent, and then CMS agent, which is coming soon. And a uh, quick little shout out to the team who did this because I think that adding coming soon is such a good thing to do. Don't go ahead and just build your product to be, you know, the most feature rich thing right off the bat. But you can still share with your users what your vision, what your plan is with a little coming soon thing. So Props to the Miyagi team on that one. Now, let's go ahead and test out the design agent because this is the one that I'm most excited about. The coding agent, I'm like, fine, you know, I can, I can kind of just work with other coding tools. I can work with like Claude Code and MCP to make that happen. So I'm not too excited for it, but I am very excited for the design agent right here. So, um, first things first, I can go ahead and ask it a question, but you're supposed to add context to your messages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click add context and I'm just going to do current page. So it has the entire home page. And, uh, my goal here is to build some stuff, which is going to have the same look, the same styles and the same classes as the rest of my site. So I'm going to say, I don't love my hero section. Can you make me a few new variants to choose from? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and say that and see what it is going to generate for me. First of all, a very nice little intro. Hey Julian, Miyagi AI design agent here, ready to supercharge your Webflow workflow with some fresh hero section magic. Wow, all right, you sound confident Miyagi, let's see. So first things first is getting all the elements on the current canvas. This is taking too long. I don't really think it's taking very long. I mean, I have a whole page here that uh, that I'm trying to have it have context of. Um, okay, so it was fetched successfully. Sounds all good. Let's see what's gonna happen now. Okay, so hero section makeover plan. Four distinct hero variants that showcase different personalities for your egg farm. All right, let's see. Styles created successfully. Now it's creating more styles. Um, I'm wondering if it's going to create styles four times for the four different variants. Okay, creating styles again. Yep, I bet one more. That's my guess. We can all gamble on the Miyagi agent. Oh, it did three. Okay, interesting. Okay, it's actually making stuff. Right off the bat here, I can see that it did not do it in client first. That being said, I do remember from the Miyagi team them specifically saying to give the agent context of that. So that's more a result of me not actually correctly using Miyagi more so than, uh, than, than the tool itself. So let's go ahead and see what it's gonna do. And in the meantime, can we explore? So we got Kimmy K2, we got Gemini 2.5 Flash, and we got Gemini 2.5 Pro, very cool. What else can we do? We can copy the chat ID, submit feedback, that is awesome. Okay, so elements created successfully. Let's see what happened down here. Can I minimize this? What's this, minimize? Oh, okay, all right, I can do that and take a look at, uh, at what it's doing. I guess it's running in the meantime as well. So we have a grid here and it did actually use one of the images that I had uploaded. So it seems to have some context of that. Um, that being said, this is a super weird layout. Why is it 
Why is it like this? Why is this at the top and this at the bottom? Did the same thing here and created another one. So let's go ahead and expand this and see what it is doing. So it says the context limit is almost reached. I feel like this was a very, I mean, I, I only asked it one question. So I feel like the context limit could definitely be bigger. Now the Miyagi tool is still in beta. So this is more of like a way that we can see what it's going to be rather than the perfect finished version and the concept of it I absolutely love. Uh, it seems to be caught up so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here and I'm gonna try it for a couple other things. I gotta be honest it didn't really pass my hero variance test. Um, okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask it to do some copywriting work. So I'm actually gonna start a new chat over here and I'm gonna try a different model. Let's go ahead with Gemini 2.5 flash and I'm gonna say can you write me some better copy? So this isn't design. That being said, it is definitely good. Um, if I was to have a site, I just kind of wrote some quick copy in it and then I can say to fix it. So, okay, expertise lies in Webflow design development front end tasks. All right, well, not able to do that then in that case. Um, let's go ahead and minimize this and let's actually create something that isn't responsive and then see if it can make it responsive. That would be another thing that I would definitely love to use this for. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those things that it made right there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make a new section div. Let's say section here, I'll just do here with two O's for the sake of speed. I'm going to I'm going to get away from client first right now because client first is going to make it all responsive for me anyway so I'm going to say well still use client first but just not going to use these preset classes so like on this I can add padding section large let's do and then here we have this grid let's do one row two columns and then hero content wrap H1, trying to find the heading style H1. Heading style H1, beautiful. Let me say, this is a cool egg farm, y'all. Beautiful, copywriting genius. That's what they call me. All right, paragraph here. Paragraph, oh, let's call it like hero paragraph. Add a spacer. You know, I still love using spacers like this in client first. I feel like other people would tell me, no, that uses DOM space and whatever. Yeah, well, I don't care. The DOM has plenty of space if you ask me. All right, let's add another one and do spacer medium. And then add a button. Button by eggs. All right, and then right here, image and let's grab one of the images. All right, let's do this one. And let's increase the gap to be like three rem. That's all well and good. Hero image. And then we're gonna add some like border radius. Okay, so now we have this hero and if we look at tablet, mobile, mobile, blah, 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 it's like obviously not responsive. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just, this is going to be a very simple one, but I'm going to pop open Miyagi agents over here and I'm going to add the selected element. Let's do include children with styles there. And let's say, make this responsive for me. And let's see if it can do that one. So really all it should need to do is take the grid and then like, make it instead of two columns, make it one column. Um, do you want the elements inside to stack differently? Okay, so it's asking for my input, not really just doing it like on its own, which is interesting. Not bad, but not necessarily good either. Do you want the elements inside section here to stack differently on smaller screens or perhaps change their alignment? I'm gonna say uh, I want it to stack one on top of the other on mobile and I want the text to be centered as well. All right, that was a more direct command. So let's see if it can do that. So it's gonna analyze it, it's gonna apply mobile styles and it's gonna apply it to the text element as well. Okay, that looks like a good plan. So for the small mobile landscape and tiny mobile portrait, I'll update the section hero style to use display flex and flex direction column. I mean, it could just, you know, remove one of the columns from the grid but I mean, there's nothing wrong with like display flex either. So let's see.
Okay, I will update the heading style H1 hero paragraph to ensure the text is centered on small and tiny breakpoints. Cool. Style has been updated. Excellent. I have successfully updated the styles for your section hero to make it responsive on mobile devices. Okay, is there anything else I can help you with today? Let's first see if it actually did that. So tablet, still like this. It said it was going to do that. That's fine. Mobile. Ah! Okay, so this one, I would say it definitely passed my test on Great Job Miyagi Agents. Now I'm going to pop it open again, and I'm going to say, can you make me a similar hero section to this one, but where it is text on top of the image for both desktop and mobile. I'm going to say, can you wrap the image in a container large class div and the text in a container small div? Okay, let's do that. And uh, I see it doesn't have this context anymore. I don't quite know if I need to re-add it, but it's not showing up again or it's not showing up anymore here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and update. Okay, so, so far... If you ask me, Gemini Flash has been better. That being said, I don't know if that's due to the actual model or if that's just due to the prompts I've been giving it. And it's ripping. I mean, it's fast. Why are you introducing yourself again, Miyagi? Like if every 30 seconds in this video, I'm just like, I'm Julian and I'm going to use Miyagi agents. <laughs> oh, that's, that's some feedback for the team. Okay. Uh... Mm, looks like they don't exist yet. Yeah, they do. They definitely do. Yeah, they do exist. So, okay, it doesn't seem... I think it has to maybe have a better idea. Like like how Cursor, for example, has code base indexing. I think that Miyagi Agents should also probably have like site indexing instead of having to give it context every time. Again, it's a beta. Kudos to the team. But these are just my recommendations. So, okay, getting all elements on current canvas. Okay, so it can kind of add additional context as it sees fit, which is definitely a good thing. I'm interested to know. Now, one thing that I definitely think that Miyagi agents should do is have it so that, like, client first, mask, Lumo. So you can just kind of select right out of the box which one you're using because, I mean, really... When it comes to us in the professional web flow space, we're all using one of those systems more than likely. Or if you can like set a page as your style guide page, you know, that would also be a very easy solution to the team if you're watching this. So creating elements on canvas. Okay, so it made this hero overlay section. This isn't really what I wanted it to do, but this is pretty nice. I, I, I said, let's see if this is my fault or the AI's fault. Where it's text on top of the image. Okay, you know what? That's my fault. I said text on top of the image. I meant like text image, not like text image. But I mean, hey, that one's totally open to interpretation. So not going to blame it on that. And obviously this looks bad right now because there's no overlay. Um, I'm really interested to see if this is good at like front end and design. Okay, so it, it wasn't able to figure that one out. That being said, it did save me time. I'm going to go ahead and minimize it right here and hero overlay section. Okay, my changes to this would probably be overflow clip or overflow none. And then on the uh, overlay content div, I'd probably add like some sort of, let's say that and then that and then hey i mean maybe even like backdrop filters backdrop blur yeah all right that looks good so i mean hey this this saved me time i, I can't say it didn't save me time uh let's go ahead and check out how it is responsively not bad not bad i mean it works it looks good so there we go that is my test run here of miyagi agents so what do I have to say about Miyagi agents? Well, first things first, um, I'm glad someone's doing this because like agentic web flowing is the future. For anyone who's using Webflow right now and maybe you're a bit like worried about AI, is there any point in learning Webflow, that kind of thing? Yes, human touch in my opinion is always going to be something that is desired and websites are a company's you know, public facing messaging. 
human interference in that. I don't think, you know, I don't think vibe coding a marketing website is a good idea. Obviously, for a simple product, that could be fine. So I think learning Webflow right now is totally a good bet. That being said, we need to adapt and we need to stop wasting time on things that AI could be doing. And I think that is what Miyagi Agents is going after here. Is it a mature product? No, it certainly isn't. It's still in beta. I just got access to the beta. That being said, it is really cool. I think it's a really great starting point. I would still install it. That being said, I wouldn't use it very much yet at the current stage that it's in. I think it needs a higher context limit. I think it needs some more tools, let's say, in context, which are specific to us Webflow developers. So like I said, I think it should out of the box have context of popular things such as client first. Um, and I think it should be able to index your entire site out of the box. So very cool product here. I'm super excited that I got access to the beta. I'm super glad that I got to show you how it is. And uh, yeah, just a final note on the overall Webflow Weekly series. What we're thinking of doing, because we've been making videos every single week showing web, new Webflow features and new clonables. That's great when there's a lot of new clonables and a lot of new Webflow features, but if there's only a couple and if there's no new Webflow features, you know, it gets kind of stale. And so what we want to do with this series is show you one thing every week that we think Webflow developers need to be looking at, which is in this case, Miyagi agents. Sometimes it's going to be new features, sometimes it's going to be clonable, sometimes it's going to be new products, whatever it may be. So that is the angle that we're looking to take with this series. If you've been following along, especially up till this point, thank you so much. Let me know your thoughts, how you like the video, and yeah, would you use Miyagi agents? What do you think about it? So thank you for tuning into this episode, and I will see you in the next one.